No Fence's patented grazing technology allows farmers to build geographical fences via a smartphone application. This geographical fence ensures that animals are not only free to roam in a dedicated area, but that they are moved easily from one pasture to the next. This not only saves time, money, and manpower, it also helps reverse climate change by rebuilding soil organic matter and restoring degraded biodiversity. Please welcome to the stage the Director of Technical Development at No Fence, Oscar Hovde. So, welcome Oscar. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. Very That's fine. Good. Yeah, it's nice to be in Sweden. It's nice to be in Sweden. Oh, look at those lovely pictures behind us. You know, I'm a country girl and I grew up on a farm, so this is uh, a little bit extra interesting to me. I know that, no offense, your first uh, geofencing solution was primarily focused on, on, you know, small livestock, like the goats that we've been seeing on the film, right? And I know that you're moving into bigger cattle and you are like cattle house and so at this point. Uh, but the one thing, the common thing that is tying all these together is IoT, Internet of Things. So can you describe a little bit about the uh, No Fence Solutions and how it works? And of course, from an IoT perspective then, Oscar. Yes. <coughs> um, the, the, the slogan for this uh, is beyond the visibility line, isn't it? That's absolutely correct. So this uh, thing that I have brought <laughs> is actually removing the visibility line. It's removing... Uh, yeah, the visibility line of a fence. Oh, it's <laughs> so removing the So you don't... Fences. The farmers <laughs> that has this on their uh, animals no longer needs the visibility line. <laughs> so the hassle of fencing is uh, taken away. And... Actually, it was um, the last innovation in pasture usage was in 1930 with the electric fence, and I think it's on time. It's it's time for some innovation in that field. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> yeah. Most so so how it works is like uh, when like, when the animal wears this, it's a GNSS collar yeah. powered by solar uh, that makes a special sound when they try, try to go out of the designated posture that the farmer has drawn on his phone, cell phone. So he, he walks around with this phone? Yeah, so, so then the sound is actually speaking to the animals, telling them to avoid the electric pulse that they <laughs> might feel if they don't kind of listen to the sound. Ah. Yeah. But you know, so they retract and move back into the fence. Yeah, mm. and knowing uh, cattle and so knowing uh, horses, I know that they listen and they learn very, very quickly. So, w w what are the challenges then that you've experienced when when developing and moving towards bigger livestock and towards uh, cattle and cows and things like that? So, uh, are you you're using the same kind of hardware as before? Yeah, we tried that with, uh, we, we always develop things together with customers, it's kind of a, how we do things. And we did a pilot project with, with this, is, this is the one for small ruminants, and then we just attached this to cattle and tried it out. And the feedback from that pilot project was very clear. We cannot change batteries for, on livestock on pasture, that is not possible. Um, so then we just made a bigger hardware with more battery, more solar power, and then we had success, very great success with that product on cattle. So, yeah, I we, can are, uh, we feel we're ready for scaling. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good. Scaling is the difficult part when innovating and when you're disrupting an entire industry. So, but I was wondering about the technology behind the, all of this. LTM for, uh, is, uh, offers a low power, wide area capabilities, as far as I've heard. And so how does it, uh, how does it um, benefit the uh, no fence solution then, would you say? For, for us, power consumption is kind of similar to cost, actually, because more power consumption than bigger batteries and bigger solar panel, and that is what is driving the cost of the product. So we are trying to reduce as many milliamps as possible all over and uh, connectivity is, is needed, it's kind of a thing that this product has, has to have and uh, then we are looking, on, looking to reduce power there also and LTM is, is one, uh, one, one way of reducing power. 
But I have to mention that uh, when, we, when we started working with Tele2, we had a recommendation that uh, you should probably, that some years ago, we, you should probably wait on going on for an LTAM because it's too busy, it's uh, too early. And then we listened to that recommendation and stick with 2G. And we, uh, our success is very much around that recommendation. So thank you for oh, telling there it to you. Oh, you go. That's warmth of a warm applaud, I'd say. That's a good thing. You should have a great ecosystem, yeah. not just working with the customers, but also with other experts. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, but there is still difficulties in uh, LTM for us, especially in the UK. So the support also is very important on overcoming technical issues. Yeah. I see. Well, uh, you know, when talking about the UK, Oscar here, actually, he started, uh, the No Fan started as a, you know, a small little frisky uh, organization, company in Norway. And now you're moving towards other countries and uh, looking for world dominion, I believe. But you, because you're present in markets all over the world, more or less. So can you tell us a little bit more about your growth, the one that you're experiencing at this point? Yeah, I, w I would say we have just started growing. We're only 50 employees, mainly in Norway. We have employees in in UK and in the US and also in Spain. Uh, we have some. Uh, we have about fifty thousand colors uh, of these kind uh, around, mostly in Norway and the UK. Um, and I may I reveal a news for you all. <laughs> some weeks ago, we raised a Series A for uh, three hundred million NUX. So we are really going to scale. The coming uh, th this coming year and the, the years to come. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I also want to say that the, the way we will do it is that we will try to achieve sure a good customer experience, <laughs> and then we will reach one million animals on pasture with this technology by 2026. And just to put a bit, little bit uh, on the. Um, this is 1% of the total addressable market in those countries. So this is a big uh, opportunity. I can tell. So this is what the future holds. Well, I would like to also invite if we have any questions from the audience and especially if we have questions from you that are online to Oscar. We actually do have a question. We have, we have several, but we only have time for one Oscar. Um, Somebody wants to know, what was the most unexpected data insight you have gotten through connecting goats and cows? Nice question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we obviously harvest a lot of data and we are, it's yet to come that we get the value out of it. But I would say if, if I have to pick one amazing thing is that some animals actually do not need to feel the electric pulse before they learn. Young animals learn from their mothers mm -hmm. and understand the system, uh -huh. even though they, they don't have to. That, that, is, that is coming from the data. Mm -hmm. Interesting, so, interesting. Yeah. But also animal health insight and uh, time usage uh, is things that we will dive into In the when future. further developing of the product. Hmm. Fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, Oscar, our time is running out for us, and I wish I could have you at least a couple of hours more on stage. <laughs> but we'll take that the next time. And good luck with everything you do, and I hope that I can come and visit you and the goats and the cows uh, to see how this works uh, yeah. in practice. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now you can stay with me. Yes, one warm applause for Oscar. <laughs>